COVID-19 cases are on the rise among younger people, and that usually means teenagers to young adults. But younger kids are also coming down with it and getting really sick. And with us to talk about it is Dr. Aaron Tremarkey from the U of U Health and Primary Children's Hospital. Dr. Tremarkey, thanks for joining us this morning. Let's talk about kids. I, I, I think many of us were kind of under the assumption, oh, they're safe, and if they get it, it it's really mild. They may not even know. Yes, thank you so much for having me on to talk about this topic. And yes, we have been mostly hearing that children generally do well when they have COVID-19 and that they haven't been as affected. But in the United States, we've actually crossed 1 million cases of children with positive for COVID-19. Um, and they're making up about 10% of the cases across the country. So that is a pretty significant number, especially knowing we've crossed that 1 million mark. And while 40% of children do do pretty well, and we do hear about a lot of asymptomatic children, we are seeing some serious complications related to COVID-19 in children. So what do you think is happening? I mean, why does it seem like it's growing with children and teens right now and didn't seem to be at the beginning of this? I think very early on, um, we were very diligent about wearing masks and increasing our social distancing, um, and particularly a lot of schools shut down early on. Um, and now there's been a return to increased activities, potentially less diligence with wearing masks. But really what we're seeing is a community spread. The schools that are enforcing masking, we're not really seeing an increase in cases there. We're really seeing the increases in cases in the community and the fact that with families, cases can spread from adults to children and vice versa. Okay, so how severe are some of these cases? Give us an idea of what you're seeing here in Utah. Right, so I think the most severe thing we worry about is something called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children associated with COVID-19. We call it MISC for short since it's a bit of a mouthful. But <laughs> MISC, what we're seeing is fevers, and those fevers can be accompanied by stomach aches, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, rash, red eyes. And what can happen is children can get very, very ill very quickly. They can have low blood pressure, which is known as hypotension. They can also develop shock, which is when you have cool, clammy skin, your heart rate, your breathing change. And children are ending up in the ICU, the intensive care unit, in order to get treated for this condition. So it's no joke. And sometimes people who think, you know, I'll just have maybe a mild fever or be able to eat anything without tasting it. You know, it's, it's no messing around here. So is there anything specific that parents need to do or be mindful of for their children during uh, the holidays here as people are gonna be gathering and people's habits uh, change a little bit from what we've been used to over the last six months? Yes, I think there are a number of changes. You're correct. The holiday season is coming up. The weather is getting colder. It is getting a little bit more challenging to take care of those precautions. So the most important things are wearing a mask, washing your hands frequently, and av avoiding large crowds whenever possible, particularly large groups indoors. And I think that's probably going to be one of the most challenging things is you know, being able to gather outdoors when the temperatures are dropping. And one last quick question before we let you go. Do, have you noticed the children, are, are they experiencing any of the long-term side effects of having had COVID like we see in some adults? Yes. So even though children do tend to have milder symptoms, we are also starting to see some of these long-term effects. So things like chronic fatigue, joint pain, muscle pain, difficulty focusing. And a lot of these things can impact school attendance, school performance, and even long-term impacts on extracurricular activities. Um, and we are starting to see those referrals here at Primary Children's Hospital. Well, I don't like any of it. And I think that uh, I'm probably not in the minority here. <laughs> Thanks a lot for talking with us, Dr. Tremarkey. It's a good reminder that we need to be cautious with everybody including the children. We cannot take this for granted. Thanks for your time and everything you're doing to help out. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. You too. Happy holidays.